Uh, hi, I'm Stefan Netz, uh, working at GRAM in uh, Lyon. Uh, GRAM is a national center for music creation and it's based in Lyon, in France. And today I am going to introduce a fourth domain specific language for audio processing that we have uh, developed in GRAM and how we use uh, LLVM technology into this project. Um, what is FAUST? FAST is a domain-specific language, a functional domain-specific language for real-time audio processing and synthesis. So basically, it allows uh, the developer to design musical instruments, audio effects, synthesizer. And um, in FAUST, what you do as a programmer is you, you, you program, you, you design your signal processor so a function that transforms input, input signal into output signal. And in our domain, input signals are actually infinite stream of samples uh, in the audio domain. And it, it signals can also be control signal uh, with a specific value at a specific point in time. So basically, a force program describes the signal processor, so mapping transforming it input signal into output signal. And this is done in Faust by using a block diagram algebra of five main composition operator, and it's a pure textual language. Uh, so basically, as a programmer, again, you describe a block diagram uh, using this algebra. And we will have a look at a simple example here. We have a block diagram uh, starting from the left. You have an input signal, uh, which is split into uh, two branches. Uh, on the top, you have a uh, block A uh, in sequence with B. And on the bottom, you have block C in sequence with uh, D. And then the two outputs are merged in a single signal that goes into the E block, which is uh, connected with a recursive operator with a F block. So this kind of uh, block diagram can be uh, designed with a false language. Uh, and here you have a piece of code to describe uh, this diagram. And basically here you see the process line on the top, which describes exactly this block diagram by using special uh, syntax to express the split operation, the parallel operation, the sequence operation, the merge operation, and the recursive operation. So obviously this program is not really a real program, but it's just to show you how we, you dis, we describe uh, this kind of diagram using the first uh, syntax and the block diagram algebra. If we now look at a more uh, real uh, example, this is an example of a Morgan uh, uh, synthesizer, which basically, uh, basically does uh, additive synthesis by adding two different uh, simple signals, oscillator at different frequency and with different amplitude. And here in this piece of force code, you have basically uh, the sections that that describes the DSP itself. And you have also a part that describes the user interface, the control interface in a kind of abstract way here by using sliders and button. And at the end, you have the process line, which basically connect everything to have a working program. Now we can use uh, the compiler running into uh, uh, a web application. So in this case, we just have the compiler running in the page on the client side, uh, compiling WebAssembly and using a, a WebAssembly backend. And here the code is uh, compiled on the fly and you can hear the result of this uh, simple uh, uh, instrument changing the frequency uh, uh, and, and so. Now, uh, obviously, uh, this language has been developed over uh, several years, and now we have a lot of external contribution, basically as a, a libraries of DSP object, so that as a programmer, you can connect and use uh, already written filters, uh, oscillator, all kind of DSP bricks 
you have to use when you want to describe a, a bit more complex uh, algorithm. And you can also uh, look at this example, for instance, on the first site, we have this uh, page where you, we have description of DSP. You can directly uh, launch the code into the first IDE uh, web environment and run it and listen to the result. And in this case, it's a physical model of L uh, using modal synthesis, which is a special case of physical modeling. Um, so the deployment model, basically the compiler uh, produce a kind of DSP kernel. So as a C++ class or LLV module, as we will see later on, and we have to add additional code, uh, what we call architecture files, uh, that allows to connect this kernel to the external world. So basically to the audio layer, so that your DSP kernel can uh, process audio input and produce audio outputs, and to the controller part, uh, which is in this case is in green. So the controller is typically a graphical user interface, but could be also a pure network. Uh, interface. And FAUST basically is used as a high-level alternative uh, to C++, C++ so, so that you can uh, develop very efficient uh, DSP algorithm, but without, without uh, com uh, complete complexity of, of C and C++. And it's used now in concert artistic production, education, research, open source project and uh, commercial application. Uh, and as you can see on this picture, we, we can target from embedded devices uh, to uh, tablets based application, to web uh, pages and web uh, deployment and VST uh, plugins, so plugins that you can connect uh, on or load into a commercial uh, music application. And we have now more than uh, 100 projects that we list on a forward by the first page on the uh, first site. The compilation model now, which is more interesting for, for this uh, conference, um, basically the first compiler tries to generate the most efficient implementation for the target language. So we have this kind of scheme. Uh, from the left, basically, the block diagram is uh, the internal representation of what the developer has written. Then we have a, a, a semantic propagation uh, phase that basically computes the set of output signal um, as a function of input signal, input audio signal, and control signal. Then we have another intermediate representation, a state-based representation called false imperative representation. And from this uh, second representation, we can uh, produce C, C++, LLVM, IR, and even WebAssembly when we want to uh, deploy the, the compiler and uh, the resulting code into a web application. Um, so it means that uh, assuming we have uh, the, the, the compiler as a library, and with the, the adapted backend, we can deploy the complete uh, compilation chain entirely in, in, in a plugin, in an application, or even in a, in a web application if we use a WebAssembly uh, backend. The code generation model. So the compiler has different way to output the, the code. So we have, in some sense, different shape of uh, the produced code. It does this uh, symbolic propagation going from the block diagram to the signal. And then uh, from the fear internal representation, it can uh, produce a single big uh, DSP loop or a DAG of separated loops connected with buffer. And uh, this second representation is more adapted uh, when we use uh, later on a C++ compiler or LLVM compiler that is able to do auto vectorization. And this is a way uh, we can uh, generate CMD code, for instance. And from the DAG representation, we can also uh, do uh, auto parallelization 
detecting parts that can be run in parallel. And we have two different ways uh, to do auto parallelization using OpenMP pragmas or with a no made work steaming scheduler. So if we look at a piece of uh, force code, here I took a uh, subpart of the organ example from uh, previous, previously, and this is only the sinus, uh, the oscillator part, uh, so the part that uh, produce the sinus uh, signal. And if you uh, take the compiler and use it with his uh, default mode, uh, the compiler will, will, will produce something like that. So this is only part of what is actually produced. This is this is only one part of the uh, complete C++ class, but this is basically the DSP kernel. So the compute uh, method basically takes an array of inputs, audio inputs produce an array of audio outputs, and uh, it computes a given count number of samples. So this is what we call the scalar mode. So it's a single big loop. But if we use another set of um, uh, compilation of, uh, uh, parameter, like uh, those one, we will have uh, another uh, shape of the generated code. And here in, in this case, you see that there is two uh, loops, um, the main loop, and uh, you have sub loops inside, uh, smaller loops connected with buffer. And in this case, some of them can be uh, easily auto-vectorized when they don't have uh, 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 recursive dependencies inside. Uh, so this is the way to, to obtain SIMD uh, uh, code generation. And another example here using the, this, op this uh, option, we can even uh, the possibly uh, separate uh, the internal loop as a separated function. And in some cases, this kind of uh, code shape uh, can produce faster code. Obviously, uh, we have uh, seen the C++ uh, generation, but when we when we use the LLVM backend, we can do exactly the same with LLVM RR. Um, so we have a specific uh, backend for that, and this backend then can be can allow uh, to generate LLVM AR, and then we can JIT this LLVM AR code after some optimization passes, and we basically use the equivalent of fast math, and we we can choose uh, between zero up to three uh, level of optimization. Uh, basically, uh, by changing the optimization uh, at LLVM AR level. And so embedded, uh, embedding the libforce as a library, we can have, as I said, uh, the complete uh, compiler inside application or uh, plugins. Uh, here I am going to show uh, two uh, use cases of this uh, technology. Here we have uh, an external in a famous uh, uh, computer music uh, uh, environment called uh, MaxMSP. So MaxMSP is uh, patch-like language. So basically, as a programmer, you define your uh, your uh, audio processing code as a patch with a connecting uh, uh, operation with uh, lines. And here, we can have a FOSGEN, which is an external uh, that embeds the force compiler. You can edit the code, and each time you close a window, it will be recompiled and JIT, and then you can have the new version of the DSP code running into, uh, into the patch. Another example with this uh, standalone first live application. Uh, it's a Qt based application. Again, the same kind of technology. We use LLVM, uh, with first and the JIT. And you can have an external uh, uh, editor here and you change uh, the, the code and it will be recompiled each time uh, you save the, the text. So it means we can easily. Uh, take one piece of DSP code from one environment and deploy it into the other environment. And finally, we have this force band LLVM tool. So basically the idea is to use LLVM and the JIT to be able uh, to explore a set of compilation options for a given DSP. 
The point is that when you change the, the shape of the generated code, uh, the actual uh, execution time of the compute function can change. So you want to uh, explore uh, the, the whole set of possible combination of options. And to do that, we use this first band LLVM tool that does uh, this exploration for us. We can explore different uh, uh, options. And uh, the delay line, the way we generate delay line, for instance. Uh, so in this case, we obviously bench, uh, benchmark the compute operation, the DSP kernel itself. And we produce two results, uh, megabytes uh, per second, so the number of frames basically that you can process per second. And for the audio domain, uh, an interesting way is to, to look at this result is also to look at the DSP CPU uh, percentage. So uh, here I'm taking a CAR plus a DSP example. CAR plus is a um, string model, a physical model of string, uh, also famous in the DSP audio domain. And here, this is the kind of output the, this uh, first ben bench LLVM would uh, give. So each line corresponds to a measure of uh, with a different set of options. And in this uh, specific case, the best results that you have uh, at the end um, show that uh, you can have a factor of al almost two between the uh, standard scalar mode and uh, the vector uh, with the, all those, those uh, Option. Obviously, this depends of the DSP you are compiling, and the point of this tool is to do that for you um, uh, and giving you uh, the best option for each DSP you, you, you are measuring. And as soon as you have done this uh, using the LLVM backend, assuming you use the same uh, CLANG version, uh, you can use, we can use the same uh, set of options and optimize uh, the C++ generated code with, uh, uh, obtain with the same uh, false compilation option. And this is something that we have done by helping uh, a French company uh, uh, named Expressive E. They have developed a noisy uh, plugin, which is a synthesizer based on physical model. And, um, they are using a Faust uh, to design the complete DSP inside this, uh, this uh, plugin. And uh, we have helped them to, to use this kind of technology to optimize their code. So as a conclusion, using LLVM for us, it allows to, to have dynamic compilation, fast prototyping, like in a first gen Max MSP uh, example and poss even possibly do live coding. And with the uh, first LLVM tool, we can, uh, we can uh, benchmark a different set of, uh, different set of uh, option, compilation option to discover the best set for a given DSP. And some future perspective, uh, we probably still have to take some time to see if the set of optimization, uh, LLVM uh, optimization we use as the best one for our domain, so the DSP, uh, DSP domain. And in a more uh, long-term uh, uh, idea is to have a look at the MLIR infrastructure, hoping that plugging this kind of approach uh, possibly uh, earlier into the compilation chain could uh, could give us some interesting uh, way to, to generate the code and possibly to target a new, new hardware like GPU or FPGA possibly. Uh, here we have uh, some links that you can have a look uh, at. So the first site, the GitHub project, so uh, the first compiler and all the architecture and all the tools are completely open source. And the first ID, this is the, uh, the pure web uh, ID that you can use if you want to have a look at the language and do some, some tests. Thanks for listening, and now I'm ready to answer to some questions.
Thank you very much, Stefan. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, thanks for the talk. So, the at least from back here, the C++ code that was auto-generated seemed quite readable. Was there any specific um, care that needed to be taken in order to get readable C++ code versus not? I don't know if you could hear me. Uh, well, it can be completely unreadable if you if you look at <laughs> more complex GST uh, source code. Um, well, the, the, the false compiler basically uh, do a kind of giant inlining. Uh, so it means um, the resulting code uh, is uh, usually is uh, all into the compute function. So it means that if you take, uh, if you program a bit more complex DSP, you will have a very complex code to look at. So it's easy in this case because uh, the the source code was quite simple. It was only an addition of three uh, oscillators and uh, each oscillator done with a phaser and uh, feeding a, a sinus function. So basically you can understand the code. But well, as a developer, we, we are able to understand uh, the code because we are, uh, we, are, uh, we are developing the compiler. So it's, it's it's possible for us to understand what uh, the compiler does, but probably it's not very usable as an end user as soon as you you develop a big DSP uh, algorithm. But it's not the point. We, we, we hope to have not too complex C++ code, but we hope to have fast code. Obviously, we want to compete with unwritten uh, C++ code. This is the point of this kind of approach also. Thank you. Are there more questions? We have time for one more. If not, I would have a question. Uh, the C++ code you showed um, used functions like standard sin. Um, is there a flag to use lookup tables instead of live computation, just in case? Uh, that's too much effort yes. for someone. Uh, yes. Obviously, the yes the the sinus example is a, a, a good example. When you when you generate a sinus based oscillator in in DSP, you can uh, either directly use the sinus function inside the generated code, but it's quite uh, heavy. Or you can pre-compute uh, a table, a sinus table, like a period of the signal, and, and just read and possibly interpolate samples inside, inside this table. This can perfectly be done, but you have to choose this at the source code level. In Faust, we have the notion of a tables, read a table or read-write table, and we can express the fact that we feed uh, this table we like with the period of the signal, and then we later on at uh, so basically we we feed the table at any time, and you read with interpolation uh, the uh, already written table at runtime, and so uh, obviously it's faster. And we can also possibly choose not to use uh, the standard MAT operation if we need to, and a switch to fast uh, version if, if, if we want. So there are, there are ways with specific options to, uh, to connect to a non-standard version of the MAT uh, operation. All right, thank you very much. Thanks again, Stefan, for your talk. Thank you.